South Carolina is a solidly Republican state, and for the past four years, Drew McKissick has been the chairman of the state Republican Party. He has to run for re-election this year, but hey, he's got Donald Trump's endorsement in a state that Trump carried by double digits twice. So you'd think that's enough. So why are we talking about a race for state GOP chairman tonight on national TV? Because McKissick faces a surprisingly stiff challenge from this guy. It's 1776 in America again. And you're not going to take our freedom. We're going to send that message to George Soros. Get out of our country, George Soros. You're not going to sell our votes to China. We're not going to vote on your damn machines made in China. That's Lynn Wood. He used to be a kind of reputable lawyer. A long time ago, he represented Richard Jewell, the Good Samaritan, who was wrongly accused of bombing the Atlanta Olympics. But these days, if you know Lynn Wood's name, it's probably because of stuff like this. Now, everybody's been reading the media. Stop. It's a lie. This election was a fraud on America. Donald Trump won a ma massive landslide victory unparalleled in the history of this country. And he's going to stay in the White House because we the people voted for him and we the people run this country. Yes, Wood is a poster child for Donald Trump's crazy big election lie. Along with discredited Kraken lawyer Sidney Powell, Wood filed frivolous lawsuits alleging Joe Biden stole the election from Donald Trump. The suits were laughed out of court. And Wood's increasingly unhinged whoppers about blood-drinking cabals and martial law got him banned from Twitter. But his rant spread like wildfire among the Q conspiracy crowd, who spread the idea who spread the idea of executing Mike Pence for treason just days before the insurrection in January? That would be Lin Wood. He claimed the vice president had joined the Chinese communists and George Soros in stealing the election from Trump. Quote, get the firing squad ready, Wood wrote. Pence goes first. The lie that the insurrection was staged by Antifa and Black Lives Matter? Again, Lin Wood. He sent nine tweets to that effect during the insurrection just before Twitter banned him. After that, the Georgia State Bar asked that Wood take a mental health evaluation to keep his law license. He declined. And a Delaware judge banned Wood from his courtroom, saying the lawyer exhibited, quote, a toxic stew of mendacity, prevarication, and surprising incompetence. So naturally, he's taking his talents to South Carolina. In the state where the Civil War began, Wood is trying to start a new civil war in the GOP and take the party chairmanship from McKissick. Why? To sow chaos. No, really. Quote, we need some chaos in the Republican Party in South Carolina. Somebody needs to shake it up, he told voters last week. So here I am, Mr. Shaker. Wood shook things up on, San on Sunday, campaigning at a Bikers for Trump rally with a notable fellow Q conspiracist. That would be former National Security Advisor General Michael Flynn, who led the crowd in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, or at least the parts he remembered anyway. Place your hand over your heart. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, individual, liberty, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mumble, 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 mumble. Look, my producers and I had a discussion about how we cover this particular race, this story. On the one hand, we don't want to amplify crazy conspiracy theories and the bad faith actors who peddle them. On the other hand, Many in the Republican Party are embracing those theories and those peddlers. So we're not doing this lightly. But Lynn Wood might win. And even if he doesn't, he's got a playbook for that. Guess what? Wood's supporters are already claiming the vote process is, wait for it, rigged against them. As former GOP political strategist Tim Miller wrote this week, if a quarter of the state's dominant political party is nodding along to claims about Trump's secret presidency that are so insane you're forced to contemplate whether or not it's an Ali G-style hoax, then it might be time to rethink some things. So let's rethink them. What does all this madness mean for the Republicans and for the future of democracy in America? Joining me to discuss are two very befuddled former Republican operatives, Susan Del Percio, who's an MSNBC political analyst, and Tim Miller, who was communications director for Jeb Bush's 2016 campaign. Thank you both. Susan, let me start with you. I want to play you a clip from a Linwood appearance last month, one that was so bad, 
Even OAN cut away from it after he started talking about QAnon. But he also had this message for critics of Donald Trump, who he said were liars. Have a listen. Every lie will be revealed. They're killing our children. Send them to jail. Put them in front of the firing squad. They are committing acts against humanity. The penalty for an act against humanity is death. Take them out. That, Susan, is insane. And yet that man is vying for control of the South Carolina Republican Party. Yeah, and it is important that you have this kind of segment on because I agree, you, you don't take it lightly bringing these kind of crazy conspiracy theorists out there. But at the same time, this is where the Republican Party is going. And I actually think it's good that we're all seeing it. Let these people, these crazy nuts, fight it out. The Republican Party, we have not taken the worst hits in the Republican Party. The worst is yet to come. And that Lynn Wood represents that worst. We thought Donald Trump was bad. Haven't seen anything yet. And it is important to reveal these people for who they are. And when they, you know, they may have a win. He may eke out a win. But it will lead to greater losses that eventually will completely break down the Republican Party. But Susan, we said this about Trump. We said, let people see who he really is. And he won 2016 and he almost won 2020. And well, if Lynn Wood wins, he wins. But again, we're, we, the Republican Party now at the state level is putting up the most extreme of its party. This is almost, it hasn't even do with Donald Trump anymore because the Trumpism is alive and well at the local levels. So they're gonna keep putting up the extreme. They're gonna put up crazy. And crazy will eventually lose because you can't hold on to the House or the Senate if you keep electing extreme or nominating extreme players from the from the party. It will fall even further down the rabbit hole. I do hope you're right, Susan. Um, Tim, let me bring you in. You spoke to Lynn Wood uh, for your recent Bulwark piece, and you described in this way, quote, when you approach Lynn Wood, you get the palpable sense that he is considering the likelihood that he's about to be in the presence of a paedophile sex trafficker and concluding that the answer is very high. How does someone go from saving Richard Jewell from wrongful charges to claiming the stuff he does, like the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, is a murderous child sex trafficker? Yeah, Maddie, that's what I went down there to try to find out, uh, you know, and, and, and how does he convince hundreds of thousands, millions of people that this is true? I, you know, I was following him on his Telegram feed, which has almost a million followers now where he's spreading these lies. And, you know, when I went up to see him, I, I, I really got the sense that that, yeah, he might be off of his rocker a little bit. Uh, yes, he might believe some of the BS that he's selling, but he's enjoying himself. He's enjoying the show. And, you know, when I went up to him after one of his events at one of these, uh, you know, South Carolina County meetings, he was telling me this preposterous theory about how Joe Biden wasn't really inaugurated because the sun wasn't above his head on high noon and people were wearing masks and he's smirking at me. And, and, and there's a little group of fans around him who are kind of nodding, uh, you know, saying, like, that's exactly right. That sounds right, Lynn. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I, this guy's in on the gag. Uh, you know, I'm not you, you can never know for sure what's in somebody's yeah. heart, but, but you can just sense that when you watch him up there on those stage that that that, you know, the camera is on him. The lights are on him. People are fawning after him and he likes it. Um, and so I, I think that there's a little bit about that. And that's what makes it so dangerous. And, and why your, I think, question about how to cover this is dangerous, because these theories are intoxicating, right? Like learning that the people that you hate are really evil pedophiles, right? Like that's an intox that that that, that yeah. gets inside, you know, your brain. And so so I think that's what's happening and it's dangerous and it needs to be stamped out. It's interesting, you preempted, I was about to ask you how much of this is real, how much of it is, you know, he seems beyond parody, how much of it is a performance. Um, and what you're basically saying is that he is truly Trumpian, he's equal parts deranged and a grifter, uh, a narcissist in it for the attention seeking. Yeah. But the dangerousness, of course, is the people who are listening to him, Tim, and you saw them down there, they believe this stuff and they might act on it. That's why we're seeing violence from groups like QAnon. That's why the FBI says that QAnon is a domestic terror threat. Absolutely. I mean, look at this. You get these rabid crowds. And, and, you know, again, it's not Trump level crowds. Right. But but 
but people get really um, uh, excited and, and energized and motivated by this idea that these, you know, these elites in D.C. and New York and the Hollywood and the immigrants and people like Mehdi are, are all coming after our democracy and they're pedophiles and, and it riles people up. It makes it impossible, you know, for, for you know, uh, to have a politics of comedy in this country. And I think it leads potentially to these dangerous outbursts like we saw on January 6th. So I, I think that's exactly right. And the, the people that I really tried to get at it, the McKissicks and the establishment yeah. folks, uh, they, they need to be the ones that call them out, right? They're not going to listen to us, never Trumpers and liberals in the media. They And so I really pressed a lot of them to do it. And, and I was in it's some, the, the tiniest bit of encouragement about this whole story is that Linwood is so crazy that even some of the normal, quote unquote, normal Republicans in South Carolina did seem to be speaking out to their fans about them. And, and so that's the, the minorest silver lining of a very dangerous situation. It, it is. It is a very tiny silver lining. Susan, let me ask you this. Earlier in the show, we highlighted this quote from a first-time Republican voter in Texas, a former Democrat, Latina, uh, who said she used to like how the Democrats supported labor unions. And then she added, quote, but then I started to research myself and found out the Democrats are supporting witchcraft and child trafficking and things like that, things that get censored because they get labeled conspiracy theory. As someone who works in politics, has consulted on campaigns, how do you even begin to combat that level of disinformation that's out there coming from high profile Republicans? It, it's very difficult. I mean, we know the problems we have. We've seen it, you know, in 2016 and 2020. We see, we see it with QAnon. And people do follow this. You can't control what people Google and what rabbit holes they fall down. But we have to keep doing the best to educate people and find the best validators to do that. Sometimes it may be a former Republican that can connect. Um, it's kind of like the, the anti-vaxxers. You have to get doctors to speak to people to say this is for your health. So it is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. And I don't know what to tell someone who's stuck in, in, you know, at home due to a quarantine and they're Googling things and, and, and on, the, on the web and finding out crazy stories just by accident and buy into it. I can't explain it. No. And this is the great irony, isn't it, Tim, that none of this would exist. None of these people would be able to do what they do, spread messages to that woman in Texas, run an insurgent campaign in South Carolina talking about pedophiles. If it wasn't for social media, the great irony here is that the conspiratorial, some would argue neo-fascist far right, is being enabled by liberal tech billionaires who are behind Facebook and Twitter and all these apps that's able to, you know, that, that's able to push this disinformation out there at light speed. Yeah, McKissick actually said this to me. We had coffee before I went to see Lind a couple of Linwood events, and, and he said that, look, there have always been these crazies, Tim, but now they're easier to, they, they, they find each other easier. So I, I do think that's part of it. And so it's been encouraging that Linwood has been kicked off of some social media feeds, but, you know, it's like the old, um, uh, uh, Jurassic Park saying, right, life finds a way. And so he's now moved over to Telegram and, pe and the people are following him there. So, I, you know, that's a bit of a game of whack-a-mole, but that is definitely the case. And even, you know, people that are, you know, maybe not all the way down the rabbit hole of Lynn, of Lynn Wood, like McKissick, um, but who, who dabble in, in lighter conspiracies, if you will, about the election, you know, can see that clearly. Yes. And Tim, you write that Linwood is very likely to lose his bid for GOP chair in South Carolina. But even if he loses, the damage is done, right? The virus of conspiracism continues to spread inside the GOP at a state level, at a grassroots level, endorsed by a former national security advisor, no less, General Flynn. And you even have House members, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, scandal plagued, full of conspiracy theories, yet going on a nationwide tour to do what Linwood wants to do, purge the Republican Party of rhinos. Yeah, look, I, I do think he's going to lose this race, but but it's more, it's less about the fact that there isn't an appetite for this in the base and more about that he got bad advice and he picked the bad race. The South Carolina chairs race is, is an insider's game. I think if he went to a state with a weaker state party or, you know, if he runs like Marjorie Taylor Greene does, which he might still, and, and goes and picks a House district in a rural area, right, where, where there's a higher propensity of voters that he could he can enable. And so I think that both of those things are very dangerous in the future. And then, like you said, just the no Notion that, that he could even convince 25% of the majority party in a state uh, things like Donald Trump has the nuclear codes and, and, that, and that the Democrats are all, uh, you know, pedophile sex traffickers. Uh, again, th that radicalizes people. That has downstream impacts. Words, words matter. So I, yes. I, I do think that he'll yes, it does. but I think it's... 
Susan, last question to you. Where are the spines in people like Lindsey Graham, who Lynn Wood has gone after, who's a loyal Trump man? Where is a spine in a Mike Pence, whose life Lynn Wood threatened, and yet you hear nothing? Pence is now doing his little, you know, return to the public stage, his writing, his writing a book, and all that stuff. Not a word yeah, condemning out. people really like quick. Wood, let alone forget, forget Donald Trump. Yeah, and, and first let me give kudos to Tim Sorry. for actually do, right. I, I would like to give kudos to Tim for actually writing that piece because I don't know how he could stomach even doing that interview. Um, I, I certainly couldn't do it. But when you and when that's that's courage, by the way, what Tim is doing takes courage. What Lindsey Graham did was a political move that he realized he was going to lose a primary, and then he just stayed chummy up to Donald Trump because it was easy, and he was welcomed into that crazy circle of crazy. So there is no, there's you don't see the spines, and when you do, to what end? They get clobbered. The Republicans rather beat the stuffing out of Mitt Romney or Liz Cheney than actually stand up for principles. So. That, you know, if you do have a spine, they're just going to try and break it. <laughs> well put. We'll have to Smart. leave it there on that note. Susan Del Percio, Tim Miller, thank you both for your time and your insights tonight on this crazy story. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.